If we have a solid sample which needs purification, a very commonly used technique is called crystallization or recrystallization. And what we do is we take a solid, we dissolve it in a very small amount of hot solvent, and then we let it cool, and as it cools, that supersaturated solution is going to have the crystals uh, crystallize back out of the solution. And as it does so, it's going to form very large, pure crystals, and the impurities hopefully will stay dissolved in the solvent. And uh, so what I have here is a solid that's uh, a crude solid. Maybe it's a, a solid that I've just isolated from a reaction, and so it needs to be purified, or maybe um, I've uh, analyzed this. Maybe this is a starting material I need, and I've analyzed it by TLC or by melting point and learn that it's not pure. So uh, either way, I'm going to put this into an Erlenmeyer flask as our first step for doing a crystallization. And it's important to use an Erlenmeyer flask for several reasons. We're going to be adding a hot solvent to this and, and boiling it in there. And so by having uh, the narrow top allows us to swirl it very easily and mix it. It also minimizes the solvent evaporation. We get reflux instead when it hits the sides of the flask walls and drips back down. So that keeps our volume of our solvent uh, pretty consistent. And it's also nice because it's easy to stop with this. So when we, um, if we need to store it for some time or while we're letting it cool, um, so that's handy as well. So we're going to put the solid in here and we're going to add a small amount. I've, I've started heating my, sol my solvent. I'm using water because this is benzoic acid and in my handbook I've learned that that's a water is a good solvent for recrystallizing. So I can use uh, just a hot plate to heat this up. If I were recrystallizing from some uh, very flammable solvent such as ether, I'd want to use a steam bath to prevent any possibility of fire. Uh, heating a beaker like this of ether on a hot plate would be, be a sure fire. Um, so I'm going to add just a small amount of solvent here, just a small amount and swirl it around and see if it dissolves. But as, as I'm swirling it, it's already starting to cool. So you want to make sure that you have a hot plate that you can put this on or some other heat source so that you can actually uh, bring your solvent to boiling and see if your, if your compound is dissolving it, if your solid is dissolving in it. And so as I heat this and I see that it's hot and steaming and boiling, I still have a lot of solid left. So clearly I need to add more solvent. So I'll add another small amount, okay? And we really want to use a minimal amount because the more solvent we use, the uh, more that our uh, compound is going to stay in solution after we cool it. In a recrystallization, you always lose some of your sample to the uh, to the supernatant liquid called the mother liquor, and we want to minimize that. So we'll use a minimal amount of solvent and this is the way we do it. It's really just trial and error. I don't know how much is going to be needed. I'm simply going to continue adding it. Now I have some solid in there which acts as a, as a boiling chip. So I have a boiling chip in my water. What I could do is add a boiling stick in here. That's a very convenient thing we can use because it's easy to take back out when we're done with our crystallization. And when I look at it I see I still have a few crystals left. So I'll add some more of my solvent. If this gets too hot to handle, we can use a, a paper towel maybe to swirl it around. That might be a little easier. Okay, a few things that might happen at this point. Uh, sometimes we might have a problem with uh, our sample not dissolving. There might be some big chunks in there. You could use a stir rod to break up any large chunks there are. Okay, but there also might be some contaminants in our solid that actually are not soluble in our solvent. I think I've managed to dissolve everything, so I'm going to start letting this cool. You can see right away as it starts to cool, my crystals are coming back out. If you find that you have a, a solid in there that's not dissolving, you don't want to make the mistake of continuing to add more and more uh, solvent in the hopes of dissolving something that's insoluble. So in that case, what we can do is we can actually filter this hot solution as a way of removing insoluble contaminants. And so a handy setup for that if you had to filter this hot would be um, to use a stemless uh, funnel because we don't want it to cool and have the crystals come out and clog up the stem. So we can have a stemless funnel. We can also preheat this with a little water, with a little hot solvent to make this all hot. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Okay, we can even filter it while it's on the hot plate to keep this nice and hot and to prevent our solid um, from precipitating out, from crystallizing out. Now, I use an important word there. Precipitating is different from crystallizing. I'm cooling this very, very slowly. I'm careful not to disturb it because I want the crystals to form very large, pure crystals as they come out of solution. And if we... Um, cool it very quickly or if we agitate it a lot what can happen instead is precipitation where our solid crashes out of the supersaturated solution and when that happens what it can do is it can trap uh, impurities in there and then the crystals we'll have at the end will not be um, so pure so I'm gonna let this this cool I can take my crystallizing stick out I'm gonna let this cool very slowly and then uh, when it's done coming to room temperature, I'm going to put this in an ice bath, which of course means an ice water bath. And uh, when it's done, we're going to filter off our crystals. And we'll use a Buchner funnel usually for that to do a vacuum filtration. And then we will have much purer crystals than what we started with.